guys. Welcome to another week of Sunday School. This is Simply Loved, week four. Um, and I want you to think about a time when life felt a little bit crazy, a little bit out of control. Did you move to a new town? Maybe you had two big tests on the same day. Or maybe you did something that you later regretted. Let's make waves with our arms to represent times when life is crazy. Big ocean waves with your arms. Feel like you're kind of riding the waves, life is out of control. Well, even when life is flooded with change, worry, or bad choices, God always loves us. That's our Bible point. So every time you hear someone say, God always loves us, you're going to throw up your hands like this and say, wow, God, so let's try. God always loves us. Wow, God. Now, God always loves us. We can trust him no matter what. Do you remember our Bible memory buddy, Savannah the giraffe? Well, I have one more this or that challenge about giraffes. Next week we'll have a new Bible memory buddy and we'll have different challenges. But one more about giraffes for this week. Do giraffes defend themselves from predators like lions or crocodiles? When they do that, do they headbutt or karate kick? Which do you think? It's kind of hard to imagine them doing either one, right? Well, the truth is, they defend themselves with a karate kick. That's amazing. Well, we find this week's verse in the Bible. And the Bible is God's true story of love. The word Bible means book. And this is God's special book. Our Bible memory verse comes from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18. Let's say the verse together. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep God's love is. God's love goes on and on and on. Well, in our story today, we're going to continue learning that God always loves us. Wow, God. He wants to be close to us. But our sin is like a sickness. It gets in the way and it separates us from God. All right, hold out your hands kind of like they're in a balance. On one hand, God always loves us. But on the other hand, God doesn't love sin. Today we'll explore a story in the Bible. Instead of just listening to a story, you know you're going to have to act part of it out. You're going to play an important part, okay? So maybe there's someone in your family who's going to play the part of Noah. Did you choose your Noah? All right. Noah, the rest of the people at your house, for now, they're going to be your family, okay? You'll need to keep with them, keep them with you, and let's read what the Bible says about Noah, okay? This is from Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Wow, what a compliment. Maybe you could pat Noah on the back. Noah wasn't perfect, but he walked closely with God. God had nice things to say about <clears throat> Noah. And he got, has nice things to say about us too, because God always loves us. Wow, God. And Noah loved God. Noah was righteous. That means he tried to do what was right. Everyone else in the world, not so much. Let's see what was written about them. This is also from Genesis chapter 6, verses 11 through 13. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. People were corrupt. That means they had gone bad. Sin had made them sick and rotten. Show me the face you would make if you bit into a rotten apple. Ew. Yuck. What once was good had become quite bad. Sin is like a rotten sickness with no cure. 
We can't make ourselves good again. Romans 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. And that's what happened in Noah's story. God told Noah he was going to send a flood that would make all living things die. On one hand, sin leads to death. But on the other hand, God's love lives forever. God always loves us. Wow, God. And he showed his love to Noah, his family, and two of every kind of animal. Let me show you the Bible poster for the week. Here you see many of the animals on their way to the ark. God told Noah to build a boat. Some Bible translations call it an ark. Go ahead, Noah. Whoever's playing the part of Noah, act out what I say. First, chop down some trees. Now saw them into boards. And now hammer those boards together. All right, good job. Now keep going. And some of you others, you're going to be the animals. While Noah keeps working on the boat, find a partner nearby and decide together what kind of animal you'll both be. We need two of every kind of animal, or at least a few different kinds, because you probably don't have enough in your house to make every kind of animal, right? All right, you got 10 seconds to decide. Ready? Go. Great, we have our animals, two by two, and it looks like our boat is ready. It's over there. All right, so, Noah, take your family and board the boat. Okay, animals, two by two, you'll move and make your animal noises as you join Noah and his family on the boat. Probably took quite some time for all the animals to get in that boat, didn't it? All right, now let's imagine we're all in that boat together, okay? Whew. This place smells like a zoo. Let's read what happened next. This is from Genesis chapter 7, verses 11 and 12. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on, all, on that day all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened, and rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. The floodwaters got really deep. You couldn't even see the mountains anymore. Because of sin, all living things died. The people and animals on the boat were the only survivors. Let's find out what happened after the flooding stopped. Now this is Genesis chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens had been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth. At the end of the hundred and fifty days, the water had gone down, and on the seventeenth day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to recede until the tenth month, and on the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains became visible. God remembered Noah, but he, his family, and the animals had to stay on the boat for a while. Maybe it was like being on a really long road trip, or in this case, a boat trip. Hmm, what can we do to pass the time? I know. We could play a game of I Spy. I Spy with my little eye, something furry. Can you imagine they had lots of animals to choose from, didn't they? Well, after a few rounds of I Spy, let's see if the floodwaters have gone down. Let's send out a raven. Nope, still flooded. Another round of I Spy. Let's check on the flood again. Let's send a dove this time. Well, the dove went out. The dove came back, still flooded. 
Want to play more I Spy? How about 20 questions? Maybe I Spy is getting old. Okay, time to send out a dove again. The dove went out, and this time, the dove brought us a green leaf. It's almost time to leave the boat. Get this. The Bible says Noah was 600 years old when the flood started, and he and his family were on the boat for about a year. So before we get off the boat, let's help Noah celebrate his 601st birthday and sing happy birthday to Noah. Look, I even brought a cupcake. about the candle. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Noah. Happy birthday to you. Hooray! The dove found a place to land. Finally, let's get out of this boat. All right, on one hand, God gave the world a fresh start. But on the other hand, like a yucky flu bug, sin, sickness, has a pesky way of coming back. God knew that would happen. So God made a promise to Noah to never destroy everything with a flood again. And a rainbow reminded God's people of his love for them. We still see that sign in the sky today. Let's think about this question with our families. Think back to a time that you were sick. What were your symptoms? Did you have a fever? Maybe you had a headache? Well, sin is like a sickness. I'm gonna take a mirror. If you have a mirror at home that you could try this with, take something like a dry erase marker, something you could clean off. And as you think about um, some things that we do like telling a lie, or maybe not acting kindly, draw some dots on that mirror, okay? Sin is like a sickness, and we see symptoms of sin in our lives every day. Because of our sin sickness, we may choose to tell a lie instead of telling the truth. And because of our sin sickness, we may say mean things to friends or family members. Everyone take turns drawing a dot on your mirror if you have one. Okay? Those dots represent the symptoms of sin sickness that show up in our lives every day. Now take turns and pass around that mirror and see your reflection in that mirror. It looks like you're sick with a yucky rash. We can't get, it, get rid of sin on our own. We need Jesus. And God loves us so much, he sent Jesus. On one hand, sin leads to death. On the other hand, Jesus paid the price for our sins when he died on the cross. And Jesus beat death when he came back to life. He gives us new life and a fresh start every time our sin sickness gets the best of us. Jesus washes away our sin. After you've erased those dots, Pass that mirror around again and look at yourself again. It's gone. God always loves us. Wow, God. And this is how he sees you. Clean, forgiven, and simply loved. Have a great week. I'll see you next Sunday.